Hi, I'm Marin and welcome back to my channel, Marin Makes It. Today I'm here for part two of my hair dyeing at home series. So in part one, I told you how I bleach my hair at home in order to create highlights in my hair. And today we're gonna be toning the hair. Toning the hair means changing the color of the strands so that if you don't want your highlights to be bright straw yellow, you can have them be a light brown or a copper or really any color that you want. I'm going to insert some pictures here now to show you what the highlights look like in different lighting before we do any toning. This way we can compare before and after. The best way I can think of to visually demonstrate the importance of using a lightener first before you tone the hair is to show you guys with some colored pieces of paper. So if I take a color like purple, if I want to do purple in my dark hair color, in my black hair barely shows up at all. Maybe it just looks a little darker. In my brown, it shows up, but it definitely doesn't look purple. It just kind of looks muddy. And then now on my light in color, look at that beautiful light purple color that you're getting there. So that right there is exactly what's happening with your hair. Toner allows you to change the hue of your hair color. So for example, you can have it then tinted more copper colored or more warm or more cool, but it doesn't allow you to lighten the hair at all. You can, however, use toner to darken the hair. So if I take a dark brown, for example, and I apply it to already dark hair, it gets darker. It can get darker here and it can also get darker here. However, let's say I wanted these light colored copper highlights. Not much is happening in the black. On the brown, maybe it starts to show up a little bit. And then on the really light color, there you go. So lightening the hair first allows you to change, for example, your hair color to show up with more purple or show up with more orange or more brown. You can also use toner to darken the hair as we saw with this dark brown color here. How this applies to choosing your hair color is that it determines which products will be able to work on your hair. It's essentially like saying how dark or light of a marker will show up. So for example, the purple one, we would say that one you have to be a level 10 maybe to use, which is the lightest color of hair. But for example, this 5N is like using a dark brown marker, so it will show up on the darker hair colors as well. So the 5, 7, and 8 in this case refer to how dark or light the hair has to be for this product to work on it. You can also use these products if your hair is lighter than that number. If you don't know what I'm talking about here with the numbers like 5 and 7 and 8, look up levels of color and hair color and you'll be able to find a chart where you can see uh, darknesses and lightnesses of hair color are basically ranked on a numerical scale. So for example, something that would be a 10A would only work on somebody that's platinum blonde, whereas something that's closer to a 5 would, would work on somebody that's medium brown hair, but as also on somebody with platinum blonde hair. So you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter with a demi-permanent dye. There's also going to be a letter after each of the dye colors. So N is for neutral and A is going to be for ash. So the ash has more of the blue undertones in it. The neutral is just going to be changing the color itself. You could also have a W for warm to create more of a warm look. So this is where it really depends what the look is that you're going for. You can also mix numbers together. So for example, if you mix a five and an eight, you that's 13 total, so it's about six and a half. So you'd end up with about a six and a half in terms of color. If you mix a seven and an eight, you'd end up with about a seven and a half in the color. So keep all of this in mind when you're choosing your demi or semi-permanent hair color that you're gonna be using. This step can be messier than the first step because the dye can actually stain things. I recommend wearing an old shirt, gloves, and putting something down on the floor in case any dye drips while you're applying it. So in order to tone the hair, you can either use a semi or a demi-permanent dye to do this. A demi-permanent one is going to last you a little bit longer than a semi-permanent one. I personally have liked using the Wella Color Charm line for this. So you basically have two parts to it. So you have this, which is going to be the actual color. And then you have this, which is the developer for that color. So it's basically the activating lotion for that. For those of you guys who know developer numbers, this is equivalent to a 10 volume developer. It doesn't say this anywhere on the bottle, but I actually reached out to Wella, the company itself, in order to find this out. And you're gonna be mixing in a two to one ratio, and I recommend using a scale in order to have the most precise measurement here. 
As you can see, I've experimented with combining different products and different hair colors here, and I write myself little notes on it because this is something I do so infrequently that otherwise I would forget every time exactly what I'd done the previous time. You're going to be mixing one part of Wella Color Charm Demi Permanent Hair Color with two parts Wella Demi Permanent Activating Lotion. So again, that two to one ratio. Once you have everything mixed together, you have two choices for color application. You can either use a bottle or you can paint it on with a brush. So I got my gloves on so that my hands don't get stained in the process of doing this. For the most even application process, the easiest way to do it is to section your hair. I have my hair again parted down the center and I have it ponytailed in the back, the hair that we didn't really dye, which is the darker pieces from underneath my hair. As you can see, the color has already started to change and develop, so it's key that I put this on right away. For this demi-permanent dye, we're now starting at the roots. So with the bleach, we started away from the roots, but for this part of the process, we're gonna be starting at the roots themselves. You are sort of working against the clock here because this is only meant to be on for 15 minutes to 20 minutes, so you want to work really quickly. That's another reason why it's helpful to cover your workspace so you don't have to worry about making a mess and wasting time cleaning up that mess during that time. Using the paintbrush is really helpful because it allows you to coat all the strands so that you get an even color application. You don't want this to look streaky. So I can already see that there's more light brown pieces in here as opposed to those yellow streaks that we saw before. After 15 minutes, I put my hair in the sink and I rinsed out the color until the water was running clear. That's how you know that all the dye got out. The problem is if you don't work quickly when you do this, you might end up with this area being like 10 minutes ahead of this area. And then what are you going to do? Are you going to wait for this side to get to 15 and this side to get to 25? you're not going to end up with a very even color application if you work this way. So that's why it's really important to work quickly as you're doing this. You also have the opportunity with toner to create a root shadow effect. So that would be where you paint a little bit darker in right around here to create a smoother transition when those highlights grow out. I'm going to do a little bit of this now. This can also be used to correct the problem of having hot roots. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say hot roots, then go back and watch my previous video about bleaching your hair. So I just got out of the shower after rinsing out the toner. You want to rinse until the water is running clear underneath you. And it's really important that you do this thoroughly because if you leave product in your hair, it's going to keep developing. And if you want to see some evidence of that, this is what the mixing bowl that we use looks like now after showering. So you can see how that color kept developing as we were going. So it will keep going. So a big part of this does come down to timing. So step one is choosing the correct product for your hair and what the goal is that you want to achieve. But step two is going to be actually having the right timing. So washing it out at the right point before it gets darker than what you actually wanted. It's kind of like a relationship in a way. So part of it is finding the right person, finding the right product, but the other part of it is the timing. So right person, wrong timing is not going to get you very far or get you the desired results. I'm going to insert a few additional pictures here so you can see some different angles of these final results. As always, I want to encourage you guys too to think about what beauty routines you could do at home that you're normally going to the salon for. You are so much more capable of doing this than you think you are. Nobody is born knowing how to color hair or cut hair. That is a skill that people learn over time. So it's something that you could learn too. And especially if you're on a budget, this could be a huge way to save you some money. I've actually made a whole video already breaking down my cost savings in depth. I'll be sure to link that one at the end of this video and also in the section down below so you can watch that one next. At the salon, getting a balayage done in hair this long would easily cost me $200. So when you compare 20 to 200, it might be worth my time to figure out how to do this myself at home. So these are just some questions to help you guys get thinking about if this is worth it for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content of mine, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.